Hello everybody and welcome to Toadwood Scrubs. This place is probably one of the most profound and influential places in my life. This wonderful, incredible, natural habitat. Welcome on our journey down memory lane, which for us is really the core of our Suzuki childhood experience and upbringing. Yumi and I have both met so many of you who have been here, but those of you who have not, we cannot wait to share this incredibly personal and wonderful journey with you. Let's go. <laughs> it's like, why are they running? Well, they just didn't have much time, so. <laughs> When I think about how I make music and how I'm turning a phrase or how I'm using music as a language to communicate or, or inspire young people or write a ballad or play the great music of the masters in the past, I mean, all of, all of that make-believe and being able to use my imagination comes from being in an environment like this. I think, you know, we get asked this a lot, like what was the what was the musical experience being at our grandparents' place? But you know, for me it was mostly the just yeah, the environment. I mean, that's the that had the biggest impact on me. The connection to nature, the connection to you know, when I reflect on my time, I was constantly using my hands the memories are so much about working with, working, working in the field, working in the garden, you know, the, the bees, um, working with the John Deere tractor. And being productive and feeling useful and building um, a sense of purpose. Yeah. And that music is one way of building that purpose and adding to our world. Yeah. Just the way Grammy's purpose was through pottery, through beekeeping, through viola playing, through her family make like, uh, I mean, th those are inseparable parts of the experience of going yeah. to Grammy grandfathers for me. And I do, but I do remember grandfather being a solid force in my life with the violin. But you but it was hours in the studio. But those things don't. I with it's him. Sort of funny, like those things didn't were not the. Like, I don't remember those the most. Yeah, I agree with you that um, my experiences in terms of the musical memories and embedded experiences are inseparable from the whole Yeah. at Grammy Grandfathers. Um, t turning the grain, like making the flower out of... Oh, wow. I, you know, in the same corner as the alfalfa sprouts. Right, yeah. Um, like that experience to clay, to unit practicing upstairs next to the piano, to grandfather practicing with me coming in from, we have a picture of grandfather coming in from working the, uh, working something. And this, like this is one of the images. I mean, he's got his work jeans and his hat and He's doing something, and I was there working on what looks like book six. <laughs> you can Double. tell. Well, because the way the page layout is, it's that's the, insane. The double, but this is ninety-five, so I was four. That must have been review. Totally. The point being, <laughs> your point, and I agree with this: that music and being part of the land and ex all those experiences were just com there was no difference, almost.
So to get off the tractor, I remember you go like this. You go, you put me down, and you go. <laughs> I think with grandfather's attachment to the land and his background in the Quaker tradition, there's a similarity between that and Dr. Suzuki's desire for this to be, for, for the method to be a tool to nurture the person. It wasn't, in other words, in other words, it's, um, I think grandfather was able to understand Dr. Suzuki's intentions very well because of grandfather's background mm -hmm. and upbringing. That it's so much more, you know, being a well-rounded child through music and then obviously one of the immediate obvious outputs being, being a professional musician, which was not the original intention of the method in the first place. Our experience with Grammy Grandfather and living the Suzuki method as a life, um, especially in our stories and memories revolving around their place in Edwardsville, that is transferable to the bigger message of the Suzuki method being for the whole person, as mm -hmm. you were saying. Um, that it's not just about building this one skill set of playing the A string. A, 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 going down to D, D. Like it's not just about building, developing a skill set. It's about developing grit and the, the progression from one skill to a next and then building on that through your review. So you're constantly building confidence, which is like conscientiousness. You're also building the, the resilience to keep on going because you have faith in what you see in group class with the more advanced kids playing, you have something to look forward to and to aspire to. Um, through that, that all reinforced by the review factor. So there, there's the past, present, future that's built in into each child's development. Um, and in that way of taking in the whole person and the character building that is required by diligently following the method that way, that character development is what we experienced, embodied at the Grammy Grandfather week-long spring break experiences, yeah. for example. Um, that, for me, is what resonates most when I think outside of the, right. the, the Toadwood Scrubs experience mm -hmm. and what really is the most important set of core values. Th those character traits are transferable, are adaptable in any sphere. So just because it's in music, is right. not actually limiting, it's actually freeing yeah. into other pursuits. I do think that, you know, when at, so we get asked how, how was, you know, the influence of Grammy Grandfather and that environment in the context of us growing up and who we are as musicians today. I mean, I, I, I think it's at the root of how the stage and how interacting with other artists and other musicians, like with an orchestra, mm -hmm. is, is a playground. Right, right. You know, and and through this this focused and energized, you know, this thing you can't describe. But when you're playing with one other person, two other people, like I do in my band, or with an orchestra, you make eye contact with several musicians, and you're you're playing a beautiful phrase, or you're rocking out, and I mean, it's incredible. It's it's a total playground, and I think it's because there's there's so many possible. You see so many possibilities rather than hindrances because we spent so much time as a young person just reviewing and, and gaining confidence by, by... The effort that the, you're putting in day to day. The effort putting in day to day, the discipline, the structure, you know. The freedom comes from all of that incredible structure. That core. That core. So going on that from the, talking about the day to day factor as compared to the overarching the overarching for me, when we're, as we're talking about this, it's becoming, it's crystallizing how important Grammy Grandfather's presence was in our lives as sort of, yeah, the the overhead umbrella. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't, we wouldn't be who we are, or where we are, without mom and dad's mm -hmm. Absolutely. day to day. Their grit. We say mom's spine of discipline is now my own spine, is now your spine of yeah. discipline. That that willpower to go through that every single day, that's, that's not an easy task. <laughs> not an easy task. And I think all the parents out there will relate to that. Yes, I mean, 
you're doing, you're starting this alumni project, which is, which is allowing people like myself, my colleagues, you know, you're able to now connect so many people out in the field. One of the most rewarding things for me in deciding to move forward with the Suzuki Alumni Project mm -hmm. and actually having this initiative move forward, these responses that I receive, mm -hmm. I'm so proud of my Suzuki education. Thank you for giving me a way to show my gratitude. Yeah. These are the things that I'm hearing back when I'm asking people to donate recitals in honor of their Suzuki education. Yeah. The Suzuki Alumni Project provides an avenue through which those proud Suzuki kids give their gratitude and pay it forward, really. Yeah. And also pay it back mm -hmm. on their own education, but it's also paying it forward for the next generation. Yeah. The teacher trainers that are yet to go through their teacher training, the Suzuki students that are yet to benefit from that teacher training, and the Suzuki Association of the Americas, without whom none of this would exist, along with the International Suzuki Association and the whole, the whole mothership mm -hmm. being the Suzuki method. Um, without this coordinated effort, none of this would be happening. But the, anyway, it's just been so rewarding yeah. to get this feedback. I think fundamentally, we both feel, and it's not just us, that there's so many of us that feel that it has been such an enriching experience. And it's, and in a world where we know how beautiful a musical experience can be, and how much joy it brings to people, and how in today's world we need those things so much for, for civilization to feel connected, that it takes a, a full, wonderful soul to express that. And the Suzuki Method empowers that sort of, that, that seed within an artist and within a person. Even we, I mean, we've heard stories of, of people who are having wonderful lives that are not professional musicians that credit the, the structure of the Suzuki Method in giving life to their existence and what they do. You know, it's great to see the teachers also out, out in the, you know, I say the field, but out there doing the real work, you know, and, but teachers that are our, our age, who are growing up in today's time, but who are so dedicated and, and, and proud to be part of, part of the movement, to be part of the, to, to be part of giving birth to something so beautiful and important in today's world and open to new ideas without losing the core principles. Mm -hmm. Grand grandfather would say a method is only as good as the teacher teaching it. Yeah. That is where the teacher comes in and their own sense of, and our own sense of this is Suzuki paradigm, like constant growth, right? We never stop growing. Put me in my grave the day I stop growing and changing and challenging yeah. myself, right? And that is a, also a core fundamental Suzuki principle. So each of us carries that obligation, whether we're, we're Suzuki kids ourselves or Suzuki kids in a teacher, in a Suzuki teacher avenue, or as a performer, or in, some ad, in an administrative Suzuki role, all of the above for some people. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the constant growth of introspection, but also looking out and seeing what we can learn from the world around us um, while reinforcing and revisiting constantly those values that are the building blocks of the Suzuki Method, that is also part of our process yeah. in this extended family. Yeah. Yumi and I wanted to just thank all of you for allowing us to have this moment for us to rediscover our past and our history and what has nurtured us to who we have been in today's world as musicians and as people. And we wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you. This experience has deepened our gratitude for the Suzuki movement and what it has done in the decades past, who we represent now, but also with renewed strength and energy moving forward with all of us. Thank you.
So right here was where the tractor parked, and under here is where there's buried treasure. Underneath the cement. Pretty amazing. It's probably, the treasure's probably worth about ten dollars. <laughs> but it was the magic and the imagination that counted. Very special.